my name is Ty Garibay. I'm the VP of Engineering of Mythic. And I'm here to talk to you today about how we accelerate deep neural networks on the Mythic AMP. Mythic is a uh, venture funded startup. Uh, roots go all the way back to 2012. And we've been focused on power efficient inference processing. We have developed a unique analog computing memory technology. And currently we have about 110 employees with offices in Austin and in Redwood City. We've raised over 90 million in VC funding through our Series B uh, from major investors like SoftBank and DFJ, Lux and Baylor. We have shown that analog compute and memory is ideal for edge AI. Our unique technology combines embedded flash with analog circuits, and we get the best of both worlds, a tremendous density of flash memory with high performance at very low power levels using analog compute. This enables us to execute uh, DNNs on chip with all of our weight storage included on chip, which means we don't have any need for an external DRAM. It also allows us to support a deterministic execution model with our data flow architecture built around our analog compute engines. The result is a best in class combination of latency, power, and weight capacity in a single chip, very cost effective processor built in a mature 40 nanometer process. What we're working on now will show that the technology and architecture can easily scale from wearables up to edge servers. Our first product that we've introduced recently is the M1108. And it's the industry's first analog matrix processor, or AMP. It consists of a data flow architecture with 112 tiles. Of those, 108 of the tiles have analog compute engines, or ACEs. Um, each of the compute tiles includes an analog engine, a digital SIMD vector engine that we've developed, a 32-bit RISC-V nanoprocessor, a network on chip router to communicate with the rest of the chip, and a substantial local SRAM. And then we reserve a few tiles on the edge for interfaces to the rest of the system. Uh, our primary interface is a four-lane PCIe uh, that communicates with the host. And then we support a variety of serial interfaces for system development. The chip supports computation in uh, int4, int8, and int16. Uh, and we have the capacity for well over 100 million weights. Um, and we can run a single uh, network or multiple networks entirely on chip. This would yield a theoretical maximum of about 35 tops and a simulated a result of ResNet 50 running at close to 900 frames per second. The 19 by 19 package has no need for DRAM as mentioned earlier, allowing for a very efficient system design, especially uh, when the uh, normal power consumption runs in about the four watts or less range, requiring uh, very little cooling. Successful edge AI solutions have to cover at least these six different vectors of uh, performance and metrics. A number of them are driven by hardware, power consumption, size, cost, which is largely related to, uh, to size. But a number of others are, are uh, really determined by the quality of the software that comes with the chip. Uh, these include the ability to achieve uh, very low latency, the ability to uh, hold a real model uh, that's quite large. The storage capacity we have is substantial, but actually packing a real network into our uh, compute elements and storage uh, is dependent uh, highly on the quality of our compiler. And then achieving high AI performance uh, and image processing accuracy, image recognition accuracy um, is determined by the quality of our training, retraining uh, solutions along with the compiler. 
So at Mythic, we started with some uh, very fundamental goals for our software that would uh, enable our analog compute. Primarily, we're shooting for a very easy and familiar flow, the ability to get high performance, as they say, at the push of a button, uh, but at least without uh, hand coding and without hand optimizing for our cell phone. The training for analog compute, we intend to resemble that which any uh, processor would have to do for 8-bit uh, quantization. Um, and it's fundamentally easy for the customers to use. We, of course, uh, are shooting to support a broad range of uh, DNNs, support for all the popular operators, network types, training frameworks. Um, and we have aimed to achieve exceptional performance for networks that we've optimized for our hardware, but almost any network should run well. Perhaps most importantly for an analog compute engine and the first of its kind, we ensure that one binary will run on all of our devices. There is no need for on-device retraining or device-specific retraining. A binary generated for a Mythic AMP will run consistently on any Mythic AMP. One of the primary strengths that we're building into our software is again that we require no manual intervention. All of our results can be obtained through a standard flow and these flows are given to our customers as references. Um, the customers can build on those and then select uh, particular vectors for optimization, be it uh, power reduction, uh, tile utilization, latency reduction, whatever's most important to their system. We also enable high performance within edge constraints. With an, a Mythic AMP, we have plenty of storage and a great deal of compute power, but we do have a fixed amount of local memory in our on-chip SRAM. Mythic software makes it easy to select and optimize networks that fit well in this uh, computing paradigm. And the Mythic graph compiler in particular optimizes memory usage and allows us to achieve maximum resolution in frame per second for image inference. Lastly, we've developed a flexible hybrid architecture we have the ability to run DNNs on the Mythic ACE tiles or on digital processing resources. The Mythic software can map a particular application, a layer, a node of the graph to different compute resources, including our on-chip analog engine, our on-chip uh, digital SIMD or processors, or even uh, leverage host-based acceleration or other digital accelerators in a system. Our workflow starts by uh, working with industry standard deep learning frameworks, including PyTorch and CAFE. The output of um, this uh, of a normal development uh, of a neural network is generally going to be an FP32 uh, uh, network that we take in PyTorch or Onyx into our own uh, optimization suite, which includes post training quantization effectively to an 8-bit range, and then retraining that is uh, spe that specifically takes into account the nature of our analog compute engines. The output of the optimization suite is passed to the graph compiler in a uh, internal variant of Onyx and MLIR. And that uh, graph compiler generates a binary for the Mythic processor. This is built into a host runtime, which is lightweight, easily ported to an x86 or ARM platforms and run on our chip. So let's talk about the different stages of the workflow. Again, the goal is to make analog aware training as easy as quantization aware training. Um, the requirements are quite similar. First, we transform the network uh, to an analog aware network, which includes quantization to an effective intake range. We have optimized models of our compute, uh, analog compute to simulate the effects of analog during our retrain. The uh, algorithms improve our network performance when executed on the Mythic Ace, taking into account uh, variation and the particular uh, strengths of our analog compute in performing certain operations. The retrain network is delivered to the graph compiler 
in a structured format based on either Onyx uh, and or MLIR. The graph compiler uh, receives the Onyx MLIR, MLIR uh, network and uh, uh, performance targets and constraints from the user and the weights that have been generated by the uh, training flow uh, and combines these all uh, into a mapping of weights, functions, and data and allocating each of these into a bundle that can be uh, loaded into each of the 108 tiles of the M1108. The compiler generates C code to, that can be compiled into firmware uh, for each of the, the, control, the tiles control, um, as well as setting up all of the data flow communication from tile to tile, uh, mapping the graph from layer to layer. Initially, we do parallelization. There's some fundamental graph transformations to optimize for uh, our particular com compute engines. Um, we track all of the data uh, buffer sizing uh, resource requirements in terms of compute, both digital and analog, and uh, intermediate data allocation. And then we schedule the entire uh, graph, um, ensuring that um, all operations are uh, data safe. At each stage, we're able to review the network, uh, both graphically and um, through formal methods to ensure that the functionality of the graph remains that which was intended by the user. The next step is binary generation. The output of the uh, graph compiler are uh, a set of C library calls. Um, at, the graph, at the binary generation stage, we bring together the firmware library, the uh, RISC-V compiler, and uh, a set of static routines that all together generate the binary that can be loaded onto our chip for at, at initialization. The compiler can generate different outputs depending on the target, including a host CPU, a simulator, an emulator, or one or more mythic amps. At this point, we have to program the um, mythic part such that each ACE compute tile uh, has the weights that it's going to need programmed into its flash and the code and data that it's going to need to complete its computations uh, initialized into SRAM and each of the dependency uh, uh, resolution buffers uh, initialized and sensitized to input data. So we load all of this up and um, at time zero, and then the processor is ready to run. The weights are static, and only need to be reprogrammed if the function of the part changes. Depending on total network tile utilization, it is possible to put more than one network on a chip uh, at once, and they can be run sequentially or interleaved with data, uh, different data. The mythic runtime then uh, is used to manage uh, inputting data controlling the uh, mythic amp and then returning the results to the host. Um, so we have support for all of the common OSs and easily ported to new ones. Uh, we include a library of uh, low level utilities to support uh, customer use and debug. And we deliver a set of uh, lightweight and portable drivers uh, that can manage up to uh, 16 uh, amps in parallel, each doing different networks or collaborating on one network. From the host point of view, it's uh, very simple. Uh, we just uh, run boot, which initializes the part as I uh, described earlier, uh, setting up the weights, 
uh, initializing SRAM and uh, dependency tables. After initialization, we send uh, a frame of input data to the processor via our APIs. And the resultant output data is returned to the host. The AMP will remain in this state where it is ready to process input data until the chip is reset or the system is reset. Mythic will provide a library of neural network reference models, including uh, industry standards like ResNet, OpenPose, YOLO, um, that will work extremely well as is, but can also be optimized by the customer in order to um, ensure that they work best on the customer's own uh, data and application. For some initial results, let's look at where we are for ResNet. In this case, ResNet 50. Uh, these are preliminary results based on our pre-alpha uh, software running at a resolution of 224 by 224. We can see that uh, we have a pretty good latency, uh, although we continue to optimize and are looking to improve that by almost a factor of four uh, between now and release, simply by improving our software. Um, the accuracy is excellent, almost equal to uh, digital. On YOLO, We have uh, relatively early uh, results here and running uh, 416 by 416 image, we're able to achieve uh, 20 frames per second currently. And we have a uh, very clear path to uh, about 60 frames per second at this resolution and uh, to an above 30 frames per second on a 608 by 608 image resolution. So the critical message here is that the era of analog compute has arrived. Software, in our case, is a critical uh, part of that solution. The physical uh, uniqueness of our engine of analog compute using flash memory can enable our customers to achieve uh, extremely low power, extremely low cost relative to other solutions but it takes the software to make this happen. And our software is coming together and will be very easy for our customers to use in the future. And that's all I have to say today. Thank you very much for your time. Ah, uh, yes. And that is some of our employees showing how OpenPose runs. Thank you. <laughs>